last time we talked about more circle of stress, and that gives you a way to estimate uh, normal and shear stress on any plane in a soil mass. And to know if soil fails, we need some criteria. So that's a more coolant failure criterion we're going to discuss today. Uh, I want to start this uh, by showing this soil element uh, sheared to failure in a triaxial test. Uh, later in this chapter, we'll talk more about triaxial tests and different types of triaxial tests. But basically, um, in a triaxial test, so if you have a soil element, so you apply some confining stress, plus sigma three, and then you shear the specimen to failure through an axial loading, plus sigma one. And this is in terms of total stress. And you can also uh, write the result or express triaxial test results in terms of effective stress. Yeah. So that's the stress state of uh, soil specimen uh, and the triaxial test. And last lecture, we talked about more circle stress. So if you're given soil elements subjected to this vertical and horizontal loading, which happen to be your major and minor principal stresses, uh, you can actually draw the more circle in. So this more circle, so I'm going to draw this more circle. So this is normal stress on the horizontal axis and shear stress on the vertical axis. So you can draw the more circle that corresponds to this soil element at this failure state. So I can draw this. So I'm going to only draw the, the top half of the more circle. And in term of, uh, let's put it in term of effective stress. So I'm going to put sigma one prime, that's a major principal stress, and sigma three prime, minor principal stress. So this is uh, effective stress more circle that corresponds to this soil element at failure. And each point on this more circle, so we discussed this last time, each point on this more circle is a combination of normal and shear stress along certain plane. And if you look at this soil element again, so clearly there is a failure plane. And this failure plane is oriented at a certain angle theta from horizontal direction. And on this failure plane, we have normal and shear stress. And shear stress at failure. So I'm going to call this tau f here. Uh, so if we have this more circle, and also if we know the normal, or if we know the orientation of this failure plane, we can actually identify this point, this sigma, let's use the effective stress measurement, sigma prime and tau f on this more circle. And so you can start from the pole. So this is a pole. Um, so this is minor principal stress, but also the pole of this more circle. If you draw a line parallel to this failure plane, so the intersection of this point represents the normal and shear stress on that failure plane. So this is what we call sigma prime um, in tau f. Okay. So more basically presented a theory. Mm -hmm. So this is a failure stress on that failure plane. So more presented a theory uh, states that the material fails when the shear stress on certain plane reaches a critical value, which depends on the normal stress on that plane. So in Moore's theory, so material will fail if this shear stress on that plane reaches a critical value, which is a function of sigma prime, in other words, uh, material fails due to this critical combination of sigma prime and tau f, due to this critical combination of normal stress and shear stress. It's not due to the maximum shear stress or the maximum normal stress alone. Okay. And so this is one more circle that corresponds to one soil element at failure. And if you repeat this test, if you load up several um, similar soil specimens, that are made of same materials. So. And for each of these soil specimen, 
if you plot their uh, more circle at failure. So I'm going to get uh, this uh, plot here. So for this figure, again, we're plotting normal versus shear stress. So each of these more circle, those solid line more circle. So these are basically the more circle of a soil specimen at failure. So you have three solid line more circle. And just as what we did for the previous example, previous slide here, for each of these more circle, we can identify that critical combination of normal and shear stress. So for each of these more circle, this, each of these soil element, we can find that critical combination of normal and shear stress. So this is basically sigma and tau f. For say element one and two and three. Okay. And if you connect these critical points, you get basically what we call a failure envelope. So this is Moore's failure envelope. And it's basically of the sigma or tau f, the shear stress at failure is a function of the normal stress on that plane. So this is more, it's, this is called Moore's failure envelope. And so a couple of things to note on this failure envelope. First, so this failure envelope passes these uh, critical combinations of shear and normal stress. And these critical points are not at the top of each Moore circle. It's close to the top, but it's not at the top. This means that material fails again due to this combination of normal and shear stress, not due to the maximum shear stress. So for each more circle, the maximum shear stress will be the top of the more circle. That's the maximum shear stress. So that's the first point. It's actually the critical point is a, a close to the top, but it's not at top. And then the shape of this curve, actually, this uh, failure envelope is a curved line. It's not a straight line. So this is a more uh, failure envelope. And then for most soil mechanics problems, actually, you can approximate this failure envelope using a straight line. So that's the more coolant failure envelope or more coolant failure criteria. So the more coolant failure envelope basically is a straight line approximation of more failure envelope. So it's a straight line. So it's an approximation of this more failure envelope. And for most of the mechanics problem, again, this is uh, sufficiently accurate. And if you look at um, this slide here, uh, this is the straight line. That's the more coolant failure uh, envelope or failure criteria. And for a straight line, to define this failure envelope, this straight line, uh, you need two parameters. First one, this is the slope of this failure envelope. And this angle here is called uh, angle of, internal angle of friction. And then the intersection with the shear stress, the vertical axis, uh, this is called cohesion. So you need two strength parameters. So these are the two strength parameters to define this uh, failure envelope strength parameters. So that's phi prime, that's a slope and intersection cohesion C prime here. And so this more, this is a more coolant failure criterion basically. And this is the most commonly used one uh, failure criterion for uh, soil. And if you look at these uh, three data points here, three plots here, so you can use this more coolant failure criteria to determine if this uh, soil fails. If you know the uh, normal and shear stress on that plane, you can use this uh, envelope to determine if soil fails. So point A here, so you have a combination of normal stress and shear stress at A. So for this point, if it's if it plots below this failure envelope, that means soil has not failed. The bridge states uh, failure strength, uh, shear strength. And point B here, point B is right on the failure envelope on this uh, uh, more coolant failure envelope. And for this 
shear and normal stress combination. And this material basically is um, based on more coolant failure criterion. So this uh, point B represents the failure point. So that's a critical value. And point C, this is um, above the failure envelope. So this is not possible because material would have, uh, failure would have occurred already if uh, you have this combination of stress and combination normal and the shear stresses. So basically you can use this envelope again to determine if the normal and shear stress combination um, is critical. So if material fails for that given normal and shear stress combination. In terms of the, uh, the function form, um, so this more coolant failure criterion can be written in terms of uh, either total stress or effective stress. So the first one is uh, total stress expression. And this tau f here, so that's your shear stress at failure. Failure. Okay. Hold on. So let me actually mute everybody. Okay. Um, so the, the first expression is a, a total stress expression. And tau f here is shear stress at failure. And this, by definition, is the shear strength. And the right hand side, you have these two strength parameters, the cohesion C and the angle of internal friction phi. And sigma here, this is a normal stress on that failure plane. So this is in terms of total stress. And for uh, effective stress expression, again, the shear stress uh, depends on the effective normal stress on the failure plane and the two effective stress uh, uh, strength parameters. Uh, C prime again is cohesion and friction angle is the uh, uh, phi prime here. So this is the effective stress friction angle also called the drained friction angle. So that's phi prime here. So if you know C prime and phi prime, or if you know C and phi, then you can predict the failure uh, along any plane. So if you know the, these two strength parameters, then you can calculate the shear strength using uh, this failure criterion and the normal stress on that plane. Okay. Uh, this table summarizes um, typical values of friction angles in uh, various types of sand. So depending on the um, density and also the angularity of the greens, the friction angle in sand, this is uh, effective friction angle or drained friction angle, ranges from 27 degree to up to 45 for dense angular sand. And for gravel with some sand, the friction angle ranges from 34 to 48 in suits, in organic suits, 26 to 35. So this is basically give you some idea of what's the proper range of friction angles in sand. And uh, if you know the uh, more coolant failure criterion, if you know that failure envelope and you can plot more circle at failure, then there are a couple of things, a couple of information that you can get from this plot. The first one is the uh, inclination of the failure plane. So this is your soil element. And as we mentioned, this soil element is subjected to a combination of uh, horizontal and vertical stresses. And then for this failure plane EF, so EF is failure plane, we can actually de determine the theta angle um, using the strength parameters of phi prime here. And the way to do that actually uh, is pretty simple. If you look at this plot, this is your more circle in terms of effective stress sigma one and sigma three prime. And this is your failure envelope. So that's your more coolant failure envelope. So we know when material fails, the corresponding more circle, this is going to be tangent to this line here. So that's the critical combination of normal and shear stress. So that's your failure point. 
and then the angle theta. To find this angle theta, first we're going to find the pole on this Mohr circle. So this is a pole method. Uh, starting from one of the two uh, principal stresses, let's say we start from sigma one prime. So this is the known point. And this sigma one prime is acting on the horizontal plane. So I can draw a line parallel to that horizontal plane starting from sigma one prime. And this line is going to intersect the Mohr circle and that intersection is the pole. Okay. And then the failure plane EF, if we plot a line parallel to that, so we know it's going to connect this tangent point and this pole. So that's your EF plane. So that's your failure plane. And this angle is right here, that's your failure plane orientation or inclination. So they see that. So theta, just from this geometry relationships, you can get theta is 45 plus phi prime over two. So that's the first piece of information you can get from this plot. And second, you can actually derive the relationships between sigma one prime and sigma three prime. And the way to do that is, so we're going to look at uh, this triangle A, D, and F. So this triangle A, D, and F. And then using this sine phi prime. So sine phi prime is, uh, if you look at this right triangle, so it's this tangent, so you have 90 degree angle here. So sine phi prime is simply the length of A, D over A, F. If you plug in um, AD, so that's a radius of the Mohr circle, which is one over two, sigma one prime minus sigma three prime. And AF is, they say OF, so that's C prime cotangent phi prime plus OA, which is the center of the Mohr circle. That's one over two, sigma one prime plus sigma three prime. Okay. So then you have a relationship between sigma one prime and sigma three prime in terms of C, uh, C prime and the phi prime. In, so in deriving that relation, uh, you need to actually use the following relationship. So one plus sine phi prime over one minus sine phi prime. Tangent square 45 plus phi prime over two in cosine phi prime over one minus sine phi prime equals to tangent 45 plus phi over two, phi prime over two. So if you make use these three expressions here, you end up with um, this relationship here that shows, uh, that express sigma one prime, that's a major principal stress in terms of the minor principal stress sigma three prime and the friction angle and cohesion C prime here. Okay. And similar expression can be obtained for uh, total stress, uh, total major principal and total minor principal stresses as well. Okay. So that's the relationships between principal stresses at failure. 